evening everybody and how are we all doing today this is another live stream here from the bench ground podcast and it is the 6th of august 2023 now the idea tonight is i want to get your ideas on some of your beetroot recipes something that i'm sure many of us are getting lots of today so get thinking get sharing and uh have let's have a lot of Fun. First of all, let's see if we've actually got anybody out there. And first of all, I can see Turbo Stream saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Philly SBB is out there. Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Anna is out. Anne, or is it Anne? Anne, sorry. Hello, Vegetable Soldiers. Good evening to you. Anna Jones is out there. Good evening, gardeners. Good evening to you. Digwell is out there saying, Oh, I beat the rush. How are we all? Excellent puns there. I do like the puns. Uh, next, Hargrave Gas. Hello, everyone. Amazed how wet it's been since I got back from Spain. Hope you've had a great week. It has been wet this week, hasn't it? Rather annoyingly. Uh, who else have we got? Nicola is out there. Evening all on this sunny afternoon. Nice to get a bit of sun, isn't it? Uh, who else have we got? Bally Cillian, allotment man, is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Jenny is out there. Hello, everyone. I hope you've all had a great week and not been too wet. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, Ian Suggett is out there. Good evening, Dad. Hope you are well. Idaho Garn Girls joining us all the way from Idaho. Uh, Kate, good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. And Turbo Stream, we had another Super Soaker Saturday in Birmingham on Sea. Yes, the weather this week has been rather, rather challenging. Um, to say the least, we have had rain all week. I haven't been down the allotment all week because it's just rained. It just rained. It's been really, really annoying to say the least. Today, however, we did get a bit of sun. So, you know, things are, are going to get better. And it looks like we're going to have a sunny week this week, which I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do. Uh, Adrian is saying, hi, Richard. I did not get a link for YouTube. I thought it looked a little bit quiet out there. Not sure what happened there, but I went, went I pushed the buttons at the same time or the usual time, give or take. Um, hopefully now we've gone live, people are getting the alert to say we are live. But as you know, every Sunday at 6 p.m. we go live anyway. So beetroot recipes, I think this is what we decided we were going to talk about this week. I believe, if I remember correctly, it was Rebecca who was asking the question about whether or, or beetroot recipes, because it was one of her favourite. I haven't seen her yet. Hopefully she is out there. But get sharing some of your favourite beetroot recipes. I'd like to find out some good ideas. Now, I have actually brought along some of my homemade pickled beetroot I made a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely delicious this is. Just um, very simply, I just roasted some a, a few beetroot with a bit of olive oil on the edges. Once they were cooled down enough, I just suddenly thought I'd probably end up with beetroot on my hands. Uh, once they had cooled down, after they roasted for about 40 minutes, I let them cool down and removed the skin and I sliced and popped them into that jar. And then I used my pickling vinegar, which is basically malt vinegar with a few spices added, heated up, and then off we go. Very, very easy thing to do. It will last for quite a while. And I think if you've got a lot of beetroot, you really want it to last into the winter as well. That's my view anyway. But I'd love to hear your ideas on beetroot recipes. Haven't got any videos apart from the sew along to show you this week, I'm afraid. So it's all entirely up to you guys in the chat. Now, while you guys think up your beetroot recipes, what I think we'll just quickly say, um, we've already hit upon the weather. You know, miserable, wet weather. It's been horrible all week. There was one day I was at work and I just got soaked to the skin working on a rooftop, as you do. In, and I just did not feel like going down to the allotment at all this week and doing anything. It's just been too wet. And um, because of that, you know, I haven't even been down today. Today was quite nice, but I just sort of thought, 
you know what I'm going to do today? The weather is, I'm going to make the most of it and see and do a bit at home. So things are moving along at home instead, but I can see there's some recipes coming through. Anne says, my go-to salad is roasted beets, feta, cherry tomatoes, and basil. I also use grated raw beetroot or other beets, as they call them here, with grated carrot plus dressing. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, uh, I, I know um, in the Americas, uh, they tend to call what we call beetroot beets. So uh, hopefully if anybody does get confused, that will sat uh, satisfy that. But yeah, salad, roasted beetroots, feta, cherry, tomatoes and basil sounds absolutely delightful. I've got to say, or grated raw beetroot um, with a carrot dressing. Absolutely delicious, got to say. Turbo Stream has also said, I steam my beetroot with the skin on as I read that way the nutrients are retained more. Love them in vinegar too. Now, I've got to admit, I'm no, um, what's the word? I'm no dietitian. I'm, all, I'm no scientist. I don't know if nutrients are more or stay more if you steam your beetroot to remove the skin or not. Um, I'll leave that up for you guys to tell me what you find. Um, but yeah, if that works better than roasting, I'll give it, then all good. I'll give that a try. Uh, Jenny says, I mentioned the beetroot, but mine, Rebecca, did as well. Oh, yeah, you, uh, Jenny mentioned the uh, beetroot as well. Uh, I love beetroot, but stuck in a rut for ideas. I need malt, malt free recipes or good alternatives for malt vinegar, as I need gluten free. Um, alternative to that's a good question gluten free oh, this is something i'm not very well adversed with so this is something i'm going to hopefully learn from you guys i do use malt vinegar for my pickling vinegar and then i just add a load of spices and warm it up to uh, make it into more of a pickling vinegar um Um, let, let, let's see what everybody else comes up with alternatives for malt and vinegar. Uh, David Williams, evening all perfect blight weather here. Yeah, blight is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, Rebecca says, evening, sorry to be late. Could could get online this evening. I think it's couldn't get online this evening. No worries, you're here now. We are talking about beetroot recipes. So I love to hear your thoughts on it. I think a few people are having problem. I'm not seeing anybody on Facebook at the moment either, but no alerts come up. Uh, what vinegar do you use in your pickled beets, Richard? It, I brought a big five-litre jug of malt vinegar. I'm sure it's malt vinegar. Um, and I use that. I tend to try and bulk, buy things like that in bulk, I'll be honest with you, just because I find that it makes more sense to try and get it in bulk uh, while you can and uh, use that, I find anyway. Um, and where do we get in bulk from? Um, good question. Where did we get it in bulk from? Uh, I can't remember where we get it from, but there's a lot of places. Um, bookers and stuff work quite nicely if you can get to there. Uh, I typed maybe and, and it came up as mine, so don't worry. Rice vinegar have gluten? No idea. As I said, I've got no idea. I'm very ignorant. I'll be honest with you guys when it comes to gluten. So I'm hoping you guys are going to teach me a bit on that. Toby Stream says, I have in the past made beetroot burgers, but haven't the faintest idea of what was in them. They didn't stay together, but tasted nice. I know somebody's recommended beetroot sandwiches before, which is something I'm going to be trying. Again, um, beetroot burgers as a replacement for me. I know a lot of people do use beetroot as a bit of a replacement for meat but uh I, I have no idea how to make them hopefully somebody's going to come up with a recipe that I can share with us Rebecca says I wonder if apple cider vinegar would work I have made many of my preserves using apple cider vinegar so uh, I don't think it I, I it should work my my apple apple chutney I always apple I always use apple excuse me, apple cider vinegar. So, but I don't know if it's gluten-free, I'll be honest with you. That's what I want to find out. Uh, Margaret says, they on Facebook. Yeah, I can see there is uh, somebody on Facebook now. It is 
arrived. So all good on that front. Um, come on, why aren't you? Oh, because I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. There we go. Uh, Idaho says, I just steam them, peel them, and pop butter on them. Butter makes everything delicious. Oh, doesn't it doesn't just, doesn't it just? I, I do actually like it when people cook with butter. I just think it does make a very, very nice uh, option. Chili Kate, hi everyone, lost track of time. Lovely to see you. Chili, you, this might be something that you know a lot about with your food scientist background. We've, um, we're talking about beetroot recipes. I've mentioned I use malt vinegar, which I turn into pickling vinegar for my pickled vinegar, which is right here. It's absolutely delicious. Um, but uh, what are gluten alternatives for malt vinegar is a question that has came up. But also any other ideas have you got of, that you might have for uh, beetroot recipes? Digwell says gluten-free beetroot relish. 600 grams of beetroot washed and trimmed. Two tablespoons of olive oil. One tablespoon of red mustard seeds. One onion. One diced one onion diced, sorry, one cup of white or brown sugar, and then he goes on to say a, quart, a cup of water, quarter teaspoon of allspice, quarter ground cinnamon, five tablespoons of that of apple cider and vinegar, and one tablespoon of salt. Is there anything else? I'm guessing chop it all up and mix it together, but let's see if there's anything else that comes with that. Hargrave, the burger chain Byron did a beetroot burger. I had it once. It was really nice. Yeah, beetroot burgers do seem to be a popular option. As I said, it's not something I've made myself. Um, maybe I should. Maybe I should. I've got quite a few beetroots this year that do need using up. Uh, Rebecca says, I'd like to try a nice beetroot chutney recipe if anyone has one. Oh, beetroot chutney. That does sound nice now. That does sound very nice. Absolutely. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I just Googled vinegar and it said the only one to avoid is malt vinegar. So I wonder if pickled vinegar is okay. Um, pickled vinegar is generally malt vinegar that has added, that has got, or is it, no, distilled vinegar, sorry, that has got uh, spices added to it, I believe. Um, somebody might be able to correct me on that or tell me if I'm right. Uh, Jenny says rice wine vinegar is gluten free. It's expensive though, isn't it? When you're trying to make preserves out of it. But if it's the only option, then uh, what else have you got? Um, David says 600 pounds of beetroot. I think that was with Digwell. He said 600 grams, 600 grams of beetroot. Uh, Rebecca says, if I remember, I think Jamie Oliver does a nice beetroot curry. I'll have to find that out. I'll have to find that out. Um, sounds like a good option. Uh, Toby Chandler, lovely to see you, mate. I uh, hope you are well. Pickle mine for cheese, etc. later in the year. Oh, pickled beetroot with cheese. That sounds absolutely delicious. And um, Bethan's Kitchen and Garden, hello to you. Hope you are well. Um, Bethan, I'm up your sort of way end of the month beginning of september i'm actually working but if you want to get tickets to skinny gin gardener uh stage show in colchester where i will be go check it out anybody else in the area uh towards the end of the month 31st we're at hun stanton near king's lynn the first we are in norwich and the second in colchester and then third we are at bbc autumn BBC Gardeners World Autumn Fair. Um, if it, uh, anybody wants to find out more, let me know. Chinny K, I honestly say that in years of testing malt vinegar for gluten, I've never seen it present. It is so highly refined, but it is made from barley. There we go. Chinny K, as we know, is a bit of a food scientist in with her job. So uh, hopefully we can find out. Um, a, a bit about that. Uh, Digra says, too hard to pot the recipe with a 200 character limit. But don't forget, you can add the recipe to the Facebook group as well for anybody to check it out later on. I'm quite happy for that. Um, 
if anybody wants to do that. It's uh, just get, get the ideas going here tonight is what we want to do. Anne says, I'm going to try that with relish, Digwell. Thank you. It does sound very, very nice. Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? Jenny Hallett says, everything gluten-free is expensive. Uh, yeah, I've got to admit, I, I feel your pain there, so I don't um, don't know what is going on there. Uh, or yeah, I, I don't know. I'm very ignorant when it comes to gluten-free. Anne says, Monty Don, my hero as well as Richard. Thank you very much. Makes risotto with ruby chard. Well, funny enough, I've, I've got a beetroot right here that uh, I harvested yesterday, but the leaves on this are also edible, a bit like chard from the same family as well, if I remember correctly. Um, Digwell says, apple cider vinegar is the cheapest gluten-free vinegar. There we go. This is what we need. This is what we need to find out. Jenny, oh my, cheese and beetroot sandwiches is the best. Amanda's going to have to make me cheese and beetroot sandwiches one day this week then. Um, excellent stuff. Chili Kate, a wine cider, balsamic, rice vinegars are all gluten-free. If you want a replacement for malt vinegar, you can buy non-brewed condiment, which is gluten-free, but tastes just like malt. Um, when we're doing, when we're using it for pickling, or if, yeah, when pickling, do we have to worry about it not being a, um, a malt vinegar? I believe there's something to do with the water content that makes it more suitable for pickling. Again, hopefully somebody can tell me a bit more about that. Uh, Bethan says, oh, that will be great. No no problem. Um, I'll email you um, and have a word with Lee and let, let me see. Let me know how many tickets you might need. Anybody else in the areas that we are talking about as well, let us know. Um, what else have we got? Turbo Stream says, I also roast beetroots like roast potatoes. What what oil do you use? How long do you roast them for? What what prep do you do, Turbo Stream? Just let us know, please. Uh, Jenny says, wheat, barley and rye are poison to me. That sounds awful, I've got to say. It must be very difficult to avoid those things as well. Again, I'm very ignorant in this subject so i'm hoping you guys can educate me a little bit uh rebecca beetroot blueberries apple and ginger make a nice smoothie oh oh i'm, I'm eat, drinking a lot of smoothies at the moment so i'm looking for that i know that's one of the subjects we might talk about in the future is uh smoothie recipes if anybody is interested in that aldi sell apple cider vinegar it's very good for digestive issues it's very good for chickens as well, apple cider vinegar, uh, giving them a bit of a healthy digestive thing as well. I mean, I quite like apple cider vinegar. You know, in my cupboards, we've got pretty much every type of vinegar going just because we go, we like to experiment and try all these different vinegars. Uh, that sounds delicious to Rebecca, that says. And Lisa, lovely to see you. Love, loving what you're doing on TikTok, I've got to say. Hi, oh, sorry I haven't been around for a while. Lovely to be here tonight. Chocolate beetroot cakes is to die for. Chocolate beetroot cake. Um, again, please do feel free to share the recipe. That would be absolutely lovely. Uh, Digwell says, creamy beetroot curry. One tablespoon of vegetable oil, two onions, two teaspoons of yellow mustard seeds, three tablespoons of madras curry paste, one kilogram of beetroot, one green chili, 400 grams of chopped tin tomatoes, 500 mils of water, and three tablespoons of ground almonds. I think what you would do with this is fry the onions in the oil. I'm making this up as I go along just to see if I get this right. Fry the, chop the onions and dice them, fry them in the oil till they are nice and soft. Add in the yellow mustard seeds and the madras curry paste. Give it a good stir. Add in the beetroot, which I'm guessing would be chopped up already. The green chili also chopped up. The chopped, give it a stir, then add the chopped tomatoes and the water. Uh, let it cook and then serve and use the ground almonds as decoration. Could be wrong. Let's find out. Uh, Turbo Stream says roasted beets 
roast the beets in olive oil. They don't shrink, so don't they do shrink, sorry, so don't cut them too small. How long do you roast them for when you roast them? I think that's an easy one I can ask tonight to find out a little bit more. Now, at this point, I just want to ask everybody to please do give us a like, a subscribe, a follow, and all that jazz that we have to do. Otherwise, they get told off for not saying it, as you know. Uh, what else have we got? Chinny Kate says, white spirit vinegar is the highest in acetic acid. Then malt vinegar, then cider and wine are lower still. All are fine for chutneys, but you probably need a higher acidity for pickling. That's what I was wondering. That's exactly what I was wondering. So white spirit vinegar, is that like, is that, that vinegar they made out of white spirit for plate thinning paints and stuff? Um, let us know. Let us know. Digwell says, I got that recipe spot on. Excellent. <laughs> I do try my best. I do try my best to get these things right. Uh, Bethan says, I made a beetroot tart tatan this week. Tart tatan, tartan, um, this week, which was delicious. It was Hugh Fernley Whittenstall's recipe from his everyday veg book. If anybody has that book, yes, I have that book, and I remember actually making this beetroot tart. As well, it was delicious. I haven't done it for a while. Um, you, it, I think if I remember correctly, it's better with baby beetroot, young beetroot. Um, and that might be something we have to make. And now I'm trying to remember how we make it. Because you sort of cook the beetroot upside down in a pan or something, if I remember correctly. Um, could be wrong. Could be wrong. I'm trying to do this off memory, which is never good. Jenny says, I'm taking screenshots of all of these ideas and recipes, some amazing ideas. This is what we want to find out. I know um, beetroot is one of those, as a kid, I don't think I ever actually ate beetroot. It was one of those vegetables that you would hear a lot of people talk about, but never really appealed to children. I don't know why, because it's very, very nice. Whereas now, I love eating the stuff, and I'm trying to you know, trying to make sure we have plenty of different ideas of using it up and how to do it. So, yeah, they, it's delicious, isn't it? Uh, I wrap them in foil to keep their shape. Talking about roasting beetroot. Um, Chili Kate says spirit vinegar is made from pure alcohol. Isn't that white spirit also pure alcohol as well? Um, I'd be wrong be very wrong and says what's the ratio in the smoothie of blueberries apple and beets please i think that was rebecca what's the ratio of that been the smoothie excuse me that you came up with earlier uh turbo stream says i roast red potatoes at the same time at about 40 minutes i think 40 minutes oh nice that's nice uh, Bethan, he does say to use baby beetroot, but I use large size and cut into half slash quarters depending on the size. Good idea, good idea, because um, I've got way too many beetroots, uh, but we're going to eat them. I'm going to eat them. Uh, Anne, favourite beetroot recipes, foil wrapped and oven roasted with balsamic vinegar and butter, beetroot chutney and beetroot and rosemary muffins. That sounds very interesting. Beetroot and rosemary muffins. Um, I'm going to have to give that a try. What I want, what I want to find a way is, I, so I've got this, this, um, this beetroot that I've, I harvested yesterday, a bit of a photo shoot for something. So I've, I harvested this beetroot yesterday and this is going to be a bit wasteful. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to regret doing this because I've got a feeling I'm going to end up with, um, what do you call it, beetroot all over everything, beetroot juice. But, but as you can see, this is Chagia, which is, gives those lovely white and red rings, which I think just looks great. Absolutely fantastic. Um, but the trouble with it, I, I find is that when we cook those up, it loses that color. It all blends into one red color. So I'd love it if we could keep that that those red and white rings all the way through somehow. That would be great. That would be great. 
Um, what have we got? So Digwell says, if you have to use one of the 5% acidity predicators you quoted, just boil it for 20 minutes or so, reduce it in volume by a quarter, and the acidity will be good enough for pickling. Um, okay, okay, that'll be interesting to find out. Um, yeah, good, good, good. Uh, Lisa says, I would love the recipe for that beetroot and rosemary muffins, please. It just sounds delicious, doesn't it? I've got to say, very, very interesting. So, yeah, I, I've got that. I'd like the recipe for that as well. Um, don't forget, you know, if you are not on Facebook and want to share your recipe on the Facebook group, let me know, email it to me, and I'll put it into the group as well. I know not everybody watches this is in Facebook. Time extreme. I'm not a keen cook, so usually I just take the easy option of pickled beet, one full with some strong cheddar cheese and onion. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have pickled beetroot and cheese sandwiches this week. I'm, I'm take that to work. Uh, Rebecca says, oh, I just chuck in one apple, a chunk of chin ginger, a few blueberries and two beets and then add water to thin it down. Sorry, not precise. I think it's some of the best cooks are those that don't really measure. They just do it on how they know. My wife is always doing that. She just never measures anything, which drives me mad. But you get the idea. Idaho says, I've never heard of baking slash roasting beets wrapped in foil. I like it. I will do it. Yeah, I, I do that. I, I, I do wrap them in foil as well. Just because... That's the way to do it. Uh, or that's the way I was always told to do it, I should say. Digwell says, when boiling stuff, only the water boils off, acids, etc., stay behind. Unless it's alcohol, and then alcohol boils off, boils off at a very low temperature, doesn't it? Uh, something like 40 degrees or something. And says, just keep the chagia raw. Nice thin slices in a salad, yeah. Yeah, it'd just be nice if when we cooked it, or we did it in like pickled vinegar. It kept that colour as pickled. I would love that. I'd absolutely love that. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I sowed a load more beetroot this week before we finish. We need tips on storage of them too. Okay, so that's a good one, actually. My first thing would be get a, a container of damp sand. I think a plastic container would do. Um, once you harvest them, put them into the damp sand. And that should hopefully keep them throughout the winter but that's that's one storage tip i've got anyway uh lisa I've got to remind myself to keep looking at this screen not that one has anyone grown white beetroot it is fab when you have messy eaters in the family as it doesn't stain clothes or tablecloths i've never actually heard of white beetroot so that's very very intriguing i will have to check that out and find out a bit more Jenny says, any barbecue beetroot recipe slash ideas? Ooh, barbecue beetroot. Find out. Let's, let's see what anybody's got. I, I, I rarely measure anything except when baking. When baking, I always measure, but the rest of the time, probably not. I receive a nice compliment. Somebody tell me I was an intuitive cook. That's what my wife says. She never measures anything. She just throws it in and seems to have a bit of an idea of how much to add to anything. I I, I think um, I tend to like to measure. I don't, uh, I guess I tend to follow instructions, don't I? Don't I? That's the way I do it. Intuitive meaning I don't follow the recipe. Digwell, sticky honey roast glazed beetroot. 750 grams of boiled beetroot wedges, 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 wedges. Two tablespoons of clear honey, two teaspoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of thyme leaves, two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar, preheat oven to 200 degrees C. Place all the ingredients in an oven proof dish and mix well. Roast for 30 minutes and serve. Oh, sticky. Oh, that does sound nice as well. Um, that does sound very, very nice. Turbo Stream says, damp, the, the damp sand noted in the memory bank. Steve on the Seaside Allotment Channel uses pine chips. Still need to buy some. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say about pine chips. I'm sure if it works, I, I, my first thought and I'm, is that pine can be quite a, an oily tree, um, which might taint the food. But I guess if it's, I don't know, I don't know. If Steve does it, it's, it's going to work, is all I can say. Again, I've not used pine chips. I heard somebody once say pine wood shavings or something. Um, and it, again, I'd be worried about it just tainting the food with the oils. But that could be me just panicking about nothing. Digwell says, I just dribbled. Now, Jenny says, Digwell, I just dribbled. Hello, L. Excellent stuff. Uh, Digwell says, I just store my beetroot in this shed lay last four months. Yeah, I mean, I tend to keep mine in my, my garage. They seem to last for quite a while in there. Or we, um, as long as they leave the tops are taken off and what have you they tend to work pretty well you see i do think you have to remove leaves to make them store quite nicely now at this point shall we have a look at some of your photos that have been coming in over this last week it's been some good photos actually a lot going in on in the facebook group at this week as well so please do go and check that out uh first of all <coughs> Oh, God, hiccup as well as a cough there. Uh, Digwell says different. Uh, he's been having a bit of trouble with his beans, he says. I think this has been a funny year this year. Um, hiccup again. Different beans, different sizes, interestingly. Uh, a lot of trouble with various things this year. Hopefully it will be, get better or next year will be better. Uh, we've done a right out of runner beans, but our French beans have not been great. Next, Anne has been picking and processing all these apples. She's been making apple jam, apple chutney, apple goodness knows what. Lots and lots of different things that she had to use up for these apples. And I think she said she doesn't want to see another apple again. So not a lot. Um, this is Jay and... Um, his melons are looking great, he says. He's got a couple of pictures in there. Uh, melons do look absolutely fantastic, I've got to say. Uh, we do like a good melon on this show, don't we? Next, we have, this is Anne. And Anne has been to a local flower and produce show. I was hoping to get there yesterday, but with the rain, uh, I ended up doing something completely different instead. But I think she said the... The turnout wasn't, or the, the, the amount of entrance wasn't brilliant, just because it's been a difficult year. And, uh, yeah, but nonetheless, go along to it. I think, what this? Kate, she has discovered that she's got blight on her potatoes, which is a disaster, or can be a disaster, I should say. Blight is really, really annoying. Affects potatoes, tomatoes, just to name a few. And it is getting even worse every year, I swear. Um, blight resistant varieties is what I find works best. Next, Tanya. She's also entered a local show, but it was too early and too little for to exhibit anything. So instead, she exhibited some of the stuff she's made from the stuff she has grown. She's also posted a video of her allotment, so please do go check that out if you are in the Facebook group. Really good little video, I've got to say. Andy, he has taken on this new allotment. He's co-working with his friend. Half of it is his. Certainly looks like it's got a lot of potential, but his work is cut out, to say the least. We all love it, don't we? New allotment, there's so much potential, so much that we could do. And Scott, he has taken this beautiful picture of the Red Dragon mustard seedlings. These Red Dragons were sent out in last month's Seed Supporters gift pack. Um, so all are looking good. This month's I have sent out on Monday. Hopefully, if you are a member of our Veg Grow Podcast Supporters Club, you have got your seeds by now. I would imagine you had. It's been a week, so they should be there. So that is it for this week for the photos. If you've got photos that you want to keep sharing, post them in our Facebook group, send to me via social media or email to me 
richard at the uk. So let's go back to the comments quickly. And says, was that the same Steve on Garner's World on Friday? I don't know. I didn't watch Garner's World. I don't, don't, as you know, I don't have a TV license, so I can't watch Garner's World unless it's on YouTube. And it doesn't seem to be on Garner's World anymore. Um, if anybody did watch it, is it Steve from Steve Seaside Life uh, or whatever it's Steve Seaside Kitchen and Garden, whatever it I can't remember what he calls himself now. Uh, Hargrave guess. I've only managed to grow two beetroots so far this year, so storage not a problem for me. There's still time to sow beetroot. <coughs> There's still plenty of time to sow beetroot. Um, go go get them sown. Um, vinegar is good for hiccups. Half a teaspoon is enough. I never knew that. I never knew that. I'll have to try that at some point. Uh, oh, Digra says they were not different beans. They were just different sizes. Only those beans from 12 plants. Sorry, I misread what you said then. I thought they were several different varieties with different sizes. But, yeah, beans have been pretty poor this year. So, yeah, I know what you mean, Steve. They have been really, really poor. Turbo Stream says, my beans have been an utter failure this year. A few people are in trouble with beans. Mine was germination. Mine was germination. So um, that is a, a trouble. Uh, Anne says, apple syrup, apple chutney, and pickled spice apples. Pickled spiced apples sounds delicious, doesn't it? Uh, I'd hope, look at this screen, got to teach myself that. I've had problems with beans this year too. I've sown several times. I think something is eating them, mice or something. Quite likely, yeah, mice do have a tendency to eat them. But even so, you expect a few to get through. It's just, I've just had a lot of trouble, uh, germination and the winds. The winds have swept them over. Although my Bellotti beans, we saw the video I put out the other day, my Bellotti beans are looking great this year. I normally don't, uh, not, I normally struggle with Bellotti beans. This year we seem to have got it. Uh, Jenny says, I got mine yesterday. Thank you. And Rebecca said, got mine super early this time. All sent at the same time. All in the post on Monday. Uh, Digwell says, my three local shows have drastically reduced the number of veg classes and the number of veg required for each class. Interest is dying off fast. Yeah. Um, I've got my local show on the 15th of September, if I remember correctly. Um, it's the first year I've been able to go to it when it's been on. So I'm going to go along. I'm not taking part because I, um, I grow food, not so much into the showing. So, but I want to go along and see what it's all about. My seeds arrived yesterday. Excellent. So you have got them. Uh, the beans I've sown in containers, says Idaho, are doing well. And one raised and one raised bed is doing well, but three other beds lousy. Or could be could be compost or something. I don't know. It's just been a funny year. Uh, it was Steve and Garner's world. It was Steve and Garner's world. There you go. Was it a was it one of those videos that you um you send in or did the camera crew come to his uh his his garden? Let's know. Bethans, my seeds arrived yesterday too. Excellent. My earlier sowing of beetroot failed, but the second sowing had produced a few good roots. Might have been a bit too cold for them originally then. Um, that would be my thoughts. Anne says, it was a great garden as well. A lot of veg growers for a change. It's that time of year, isn't it? That time of year. And working up because... As I said, 3rd of September, Audley End House in Saffron Walden, Essex is Gardener's World Autumn Fair, and there is a lot of the edible gardening going on. Uh, I'm, I've had it confirmed, so I can say this now. I'm on stage on the Grow Your Own Let's Grow stage at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you are going on that, on that Sunday, the 3rd of September, um, be there for 10 o'clock uh, Be at the Let's Grow stage if you want to see me do uh, my talk with Lee. Uh, I am running a competition on tomorrow's podcast as well where you can win a set of 
Um, a set of tickets for the Sunday, it is. Just remembering everything they've sent me. Uh, for a, or a pair of tickets. So if you want to, you and a mate want to go, um, listen to the podcast to find out that. Uh, that is very poor on the bean front, says Bethan to um, DeGrell. I don't, I think I will sow some beets in a couple of containers. Still plenty of time, isn't there? I mean, I, there is here in the UK, Idaho. I'm pretty sure you should get away with it where you are. Rebecca says, isn't it funny how different parts of the country can produce different results? My beans have been good this year, yet my courgette's terrible. Oh, courgette. We're doing fantastic with courgette. So the, well, I say fantastic. I've only got two plants in my garden, and literally I'm giving them away because we've got so many. And we, we, my wife just looks at me every time I come in with any more of these uh, courgettes because we just have so many of them. Just two plants. Just two plants. It seems to be plenty for us. Uh, I know says to Digger, I wonder why the interest is waning. I think there are a lot of factors, I think. Uh, Lisa says, I think the camera crew came to his garden. He was really good. Excellent. I said, I haven't seen it, so I'll have to check it out. Amanda says, my seeds arrived on Wednesday. Fantastic. Um, and what else have we got? Bethan says, you're welcome. Oh, talking. Uh, don't think I've forgotten your comments on my single seed potato challenge one year. So sometimes, sometimes I should read these comments before I read them out when there's a conversation going on. So let's have a go. Let, yeah, move on to this. Beet leaves are also edible in your salad. Yeah, a bit like chard, aren't they? I quite like eating them. Um, so good stuff, good stuff. Uh, Anna says, not his own video, a long feature about his alumin. Excellent. Oh, well done to Steve. Really good news. Idaho says, oh, yes. Yes, just remember, thank you, Idaho. Uh, I did say this last week. Next Saturday, 7 p.m. UK time on Idaho Garden Girl, she is interviewing Digwell. So please do go and check that out. Um, see you there. See you there. Jenny says, many courgette, make courgette crisps, Richard. They are delicious. You need loads of courgettes. They're perfect for extra crop. I'll give that a try. Courgette crisps. Um, we were talking about courgettes last week, weren't we? And they that seemed to rear their ugly head. Uh, ugly head, that's not the wrong word. But they seem to have reared themselves once again. Um, Jenny says, beetroot crisps are lovely. I've not made my own, but I have eaten some and they were delicious. So, beetroot crisps, yes. I have made some. And I found... Um, so beetroot, a bit like potato crisps, same sort of thing. You cut them quite thinly and then you fry them. I found a best in a frying pan to fry them. I think some people do deep fry them, but I found that to be a little bit too oily for my liking. Um, but in a pan, I'm hearing some noises out the side there. In a pan, a thinly, a bit of oil, and then once they're cooled down or once they're out the pan and drained of oil, a uh, bit of seasoning, salt and pepper, and um, seem to work quite nicely, actually. Uh, I haven't made some, but say, so I wonder if that will keep that shape if we did it with a chugia. If I'm pronouncing that right, anyway. Never know if I am actually pronouncing these things right sometimes. Um, yeah, um, right. Also, something else I want to remind. We're talking about, funny enough, talking about all these... Uh, shows i've just put the link up if you are looking to participate in the alternative veg grower show um which is something we were talking about on this podcast a while ago on this live show a while ago um we have had a couple of entrants come in so far but if you want to find out more details i've put the link in the comments to go and see all the different categories we've got the rudest vegetable the ugliest vegetable we've got many different ideas of that and it's just for fun don't forget it's just for fun um go and check that out if you are wanting to take a part um i think that covers 
that or everything else with that. Digwell says, try cucumber crisps, lush, sprinkle with salt, pepper, and vinegar before drying in my last video. Yeah, go check out that video as well. Anna Jones says, there's another for beetroot crisps here. And Jenny says, I'm going to try air frying crisps, making ideas. I've not tried any air fryer, actually. That sounds like it could work. Jenny says, I loved your cucumber video ideas, Digwell. Um, excellent. Yeah, it was a good video. I haven't watched it, admittedly, but I like the title and I do like all these chains of videos. And um, you know what I'm like? I'm not good at watching anything. Turbo Stream, I actually took a photo for the Veg Grower Show yesterday. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I'd love, love to see it. Don't forget to email it over to me. Aubergines on Wednesday, aubergine recipes. Sometimes I consult Google when I don't know how to pronounce a vegetable variety, especially helpful when a vegetable comes from a foreign country that I don't speak the language. Yeah, I, I do do that from time to time. Again, it's just a, sometimes you look at the word and you think it's pronounced that way. It's like oregano or oregano. I've always pronounced it oregano. And then someone told me, no, it's oregano. And then somebody else told me, no, it's oregano, oregano. So I'm a bit all over the place. So I just now say oregano or oregano, depending on how you say it. It's always confusing, isn't it, when they do things like that. Uh, Jenny is looking forward to the aubergine recipe on Wednesday. Aubergines have been good this year. Well, they have for me anyway. I don't know if anybody else has found the aubergines have been good. But we've had really, really good aubergines which is unusual because it's normally one that um, one that I find we struggle with. But this year, aubergines have been really, really good, really tasty, really good amount. So pretty happy with those. Very happy, in fact. I'm definitely going to be trying to replicate that again next year. Now, uh, earlier today, I went out on a dog walk, as I do most days, taking the dog for a walk. And we happened to take this footpath that along, well, on one side of the footpath is the railway track. And on the other side is this um, industrial estate. And this, this footpath is not uh, a very well used. It's in pretty poor condition. It's really, really ropey all over the place, type of place that you really need good walking shoes because it's so uneven. But as I'm walking down, I suddenly come up to this opening and I look to my side and I say, I had my brother with me at the time, I went, there are tomato plants there. And sure enough, in this little area, <coughs> excuse me, there was about 20 tomato plants, a few pumpkin plants, all planted out in this sort of bank by the side of this footpath. Not a particularly big area. doesn't look like it was being looked after very, very well. But I was like, this is great. This is gorilla gardening. This is what I really do like to see. You know, tomatoes, pumpkins, all grown in this derelict area that isn't being used for anything other than weeds. Unfortunately, the tomatoes did look like they were suffering from blight. And I've, I've got to admit, I've often thought while driving around, um, that there's lots of areas uh, as a country or we should be growing food in. Uh, and with so many people starving, we should be growing food in all these spaces that we possibly could. I know we did that during World War II, during rationing. But for me, this was like, this is brilliant. This is what I want to see. Turbo Stream says that path sounds like dog poo alley. It, wasn't any dog poo down there, I'll be honest. I don't think it's used that much by walkers, but it was the sort of thing you would expect. I, I agree. It was very, very, very ropey area. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh, no, no comments. Have we, have we, have we sort of exhausted or anybody else got any more ideas of these beetroot recipes? Has anyone made? beetroot juice out of recipe out of beetroot and how did you get on with it uh is it possible to make beetroot juice 
Oh, this is only something I was sort of wondering the other day, could we do it? Um, they're not particularly full of water, but I'm guessing that is something we could do. Uh, yeah, no more comments coming in just yet, but be, keep them comments coming in, guys, and let us know what is going on. Uh, don't forget, I think I've already asked, but I'm going to ask once again, please do give us a like, please do give us a follow, please do give us a subscribe, please do give us or click the notifications so that you know when we go live. Um, Ginny says, I will take my garden plot photo tomorrow, not being able to between the rain, wind and workmen with scaffolding. Lots of plants being killed or damaged or killed, gutted. To be fair, this month it's been difficult for, for people to get photos because it's just been so wet. Uh, Rebecca says, did you get my August plot tour, Richard? I've tried to send it a few times today, but I have problems. I don't think I have. How did you send it? Was it WeTransfer? Um, just checking my email because you said that, and I can't see anything there, I'm afraid. Um no, can't see anything, I'm afraid. Uh, I'll e email me and uh, we'll have a chat. I'll email you back so that we, we'll try and get out for next week. So that would be good. Uh, Chili K, I love beetroot juice. You do get quite a lot out of it. How do you make it? <coughs> How do you make this beetroot juice? Let us know. Um uh, as a veg gardener, says Idaho, it's hard to imagine that other people don't want to grow food, but there are lots of people who don't want to or prefer to grow lawn. Yeah, I, I mean, what people do with their own gardens is completely up to them, is what I say. But I would love to, and this is something I, I'm doing or saying on the talk, I'd love it if everybody would grow their own food. So you know that that would be dream for me digwell says many youtube creators are crying they have blight but when you see the videos it's just natural die off in one case total dehydration due to neglect in one case total dehydration due to neglect see i checked on is it blight spy or blight watched the other day and it said there was no blight in my area but this the one I saw today definitely did have blight. Um, I've not actually got any blight here at home, which I'm really pleased about. Or on the allotment, which is surprising. Here at home, I've packed in a load of tomatoes in quite a small space, and the canes have been broken and bent with all the winds that we had over the last few weeks. Um, so, but I so I'm surprised I haven't got blight, but. I'm not complaining either. Touch wood. Touch wood. Uh, anyone got a beer burger recipe? I think that's beet burger recipe. Any, uh, has anyone got any ideas on how to make a beet burger? Let's see. Uh, yes, email. But I've been struggling all day. I'll try again. Well, my email address, as I'm sure you know, I'll bring it up on the screen just so you can be clear. Where is it? Um, where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's in banners. Well, one. It, that's my email address on the screen, if that helps. Uh, I'm sure you know it by now, but just so you can see it, just drop us a normal email and um, then try wetransfer.com. Uh, wash your beetroot and bung it in a juicer. I do have a boot, do have a juicer somewhere. I can do that. I do have a juicer. Um, I've got to use my juicer more, so that might be something I do. Idaho says, Richard, gardening in one's own space is personal choice. Completely agree. I completely agree with that. And this is what I say. As much as I want more people to grow their own food in their, their homes, their allotments, what they, they do in their own space is completely up to them. Turbo Stream says, I watch a motorhome channel. Their garden is just lawn, not one shrub plod at all. I mean, yeah. It annoys me. I think it's wrong, but what they do is completely up to them. I, you know, I, 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 if 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 it was just lawn, I don't know how big their garden is, but why not just 
plant an orchard, have some um, fruit trees if you just want. That way you still get your lawn, but you also get fruit at the same time. That's what I would, I think, anyway. Not to know anybody else think on that. Chili Kate says the um, beetroot juice goes well with other things like acidic apple spinach, very irony, irony flavor, and radish spicy. I'll have to try that. I'll have to try that. Turbo Stream says, I might try beet burgers again. I will hopefully get them to hold their shape this time. How did you make them? We need a, a, a recipe for beet burgers. Uh, Allotmental Evening just got in from the plot. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Jenny says, an American YouTuber who I've followed for years calls her tomato plants with blight fussing, removes the leaf, etc., until the plant gives up. Surprisingly, grow for a long time. <coughs> I do something similar. So if I do see blight, I try and remove the leaves straight away. But unfortunately, it can literally take hold and go right through it in a matter of minutes. I mean, we often when we hear people talk of blight, we often th I often think of how it affected the uh, Great Irish Potato Famine, how that was all down to blight and and the problems that caused. Um, it just goes to show that this, you know, how, how devastating the crop can, or how will these things affect the crop. Or well, the hot weather down in the Mediterranean is apparently going to cause problems with tomatoes and our salad -y crops this year again. Um, not easy, not easy at all. Turbo Stream says, my nephew has just bought a house. He isn't interested in gardening at all. I gave him his great-grandmother's garden tools to hopefully spark an interest. That's all you can do. Hope and pray that it will spark an interest and get them involved. There's no, there's nothing to say they have to. It's complete, as I said, it's completely up to them, but it seems a shame not to make the most of your outdoor space. Uh, I'll take my email off. Right. Now, this week we do have another so along. This was one that you guys wanted me to do and it is in fact Mizuna so let's go check this out well hello everybody and welcome along to another sew along now this is a series of videos we are doing goes with our live stream show as well that we do on a Sunday night and this one was actually chosen by members of our live stream audience so this week we are sewing Mizuna now, Mizuna is a really nice, peppery, spicy plant that we often grow a lot of here at the Veg Grow podcast. Reason being is it's just such a nice way to add a bit of flavour, a bit of kick to some salads that can sometimes be a little bit bland, shall we say. Now, Mizuna itself is an oriental green. It originates from Asia and it is actually in the same family as the mustards. It's very closely related to mustards, in fact. It is a brassica, so it can grow quite nicely in your brassica bed or wherever you may find it suitable. We're actually growing ours in the veggie pod because we just find that to be a good place to grow. Now, when it comes to sowing mizuna, it's very simple. The seeds are pretty small, so we just simply scatter the seeds over the surface and then we just push them in, the tamp the surface seeds down, the soil down, uh, to make sure they are in contact with the soil. Give it a good watering, stand back and wait. Keep the soil obviously consistently moist and pretty soon they should germinate. Probably within two weeks these should germinate. And as long as the soil is consistently moist they should grow away. Now the good thing I find with Mizuna is slugs and snails don't seem to like it so they also stay away from it. I've had a lot of trouble with lettuce and things like that this year. Mizuna itself doesn't seem affected by slugs and snails so that's a good reason to grow it if you are struggling. Now when it comes to harvesting they are very easy to harvest I just pick off a few leaves as and when needed and that's it as simple as that try and pick them quite regularly make sure they don't get too big and stop them from bolting. As I said they can tolerate some pretty cold temperatures it does prefer temperatures between 10 and 21 degrees C but it can tolerate a bit colder it just slows down in growth so there you go 
give it a try and let us know how you get on. Right guys, you take care, see you again next time. There we go, that is this week's um, So Along, Mizuna. So go give that a try, give it a so. I love the stuff, we have a lot of it growing in our garden. Absolutely delicious and tasty. Uh, if you've got any tips on how to grow Mizuna, it's fairly, I find, trouble free. But if you do have any tips or any ideas on how to grow it, let us know in the comments as well. Um, right. What have we got in the comments while I remember? Don't forget as well, we need a sew along a vegetable to sew for next week as well. So get your ideas going for that. Uh, what have we got? got what have we got uh turbo stream says i can't remember the beet burger recipe but we'll search for another one yeah we, i'm going to give that a try digwell says very lucky as once blight is inside they can't let, then there is no stopping it yeah yeah i think yeah it's it's a it's a problem i think it does depend on the conditions that also speed it up i believe could be wrong but i think so Rebecca, I do not, I don't have a one member of my family interested in gardening. Don't worry, though, I make up for it. So, interestingly, I've got members of my family who have got interested into gardening, particularly growing their own food, through me doing this, uh, doing the Veg Grab podcast, which is always what I wanted to do. Well, I've got people who have had a bit of an interest, but have now upped what they want to do just because of what we do here. So, just goes to say, get them to come along and, and encouragement. Um, oh, Idaho says she's got the same thing, and Rebecca says, Isn't it strange? Indeed, indeed, it is. Uh, what else have we got? Jenny says, I thought the same, oh, uh, the same dig well, but maybe the heat when dry helps slow it down. I don't know, but I was pleasantly surprised. I was wondering that too, if it is, um, the weather speeds it up don't know don't know digress is beetroot and feta cheese salad four medium medium beetroot 60 grams of diced feta two tablespoons of rough chopped flat leaf parsley and vinaigrette or other dressing uh, boil the beetroot for 45 minutes peel the beetroot and dice into cubes the same size as the feta cheese combine the beetroot cheese and parsley and drizzle with the dressing sounds delicious actually Got to say, got to say. Uh, Jenny says that sounds delicious. And David says, well, hey, you just joined the supporters club. Excellent. Um, I know I did see you were trying last week, and uh, I can't remember. I think it was. Yep, yep, you're in. I can see you are in. Uh, always good, always good. I'll get your seeds out to you tomorrow. Turbo Stream, I sowed some beetroot this week, so perhaps beetroot. Beetroot. Yeah, I could do beetroot. Could do beetroot. Seems a bit funny to be talking about it this week. Um, but we could do beetroot next week if anybody wants or if anybody else wants that. Oh, let me list that down on the on here. Uh, of course, you can decide what subjects we want to talk about next week too. Um, only because it helps me. What have we got? We got weight loss, smoothie recipes, design a show garden, your favorite garden tool, design in a garden. Why do we grow your own food? You must have tools, perennial vegetables, sowing dates, potting on, and a secretaire stripped down. They are some of the subjects we've got so far. Was there any more? Oh, worry. Worry is one of the other options. That we do have. So, what have we got? Time stream. Oh, no, I read that one. David Williams. The funny thing with me is I'm not a massive veg fan. I just love the outdoors and growing and stuff, the nature, the social part, and the joy of growing your own. Excellent. Well, hopefully, David, you are going to be growing your own food. Now, you're a member of the supporters club as well. Uh, Idaho says it's raining. I did have a raining warning on my computer just now. So, not. Hopefully, hopefully we're not. Um, hopefully we're not going to get any more rain here. Um, probably the first rain this day in a month here. It probably is being the first day today that we have not had any rain. 
this year has we had a very dry sort of spring in early summer and then it's just gone rain rain and rain and rain or rain and wind hasn't it it just it really frustrating i want to see what we are getting at the moment um this sunny bright sunshine weather i want to see more of that throughout august and september really my water butts are full completely full we do not need any more rain is all i can say and given that i have 15 water butts um we could we don't need any more rain and what i remember actually something i just wanted to say is um He's, I haven't seen Stuart Jackson tonight, but it is Stuart Jackson's birthday. So uh, I don't know if he's going to watch this video back, but I'm just going to wish him happy birthday anyway, just in case he does watch it back. And I'm sure you're all going to wish him happy birthday too. As I said, I haven't seen him tonight. Um, I'm going to see what we, we do. Chili Kate says, we are just looking at growing green manures for the first time. I know that you've covered it before, but I'd love a refresher if anyone else is interested. I think we did green manures not that long ago, didn't we? Was that on my list? Yeah, it was one that was it's ticked off. So we have done it, but we can certainly, I'll probably do it on the podcast soon, actually, if that's any use, um, Kate and Phil. Um Because I am sending out next month, September seeds do include a green manure as well. So, um, but yeah, that might be something we can think of as well. Green manure recap. Turbo stream. I've noticed that we now get weeks of weather, i.e. no rain for weeks, then rain for, yeah, it does feel like that. Um, just, I, as I, say, I just want some sunshine. Just want some sunshine, some warm weather. I, I put it like this, I am pretty quiet at work at the moment because we're not getting the warm weather that we normally affects us. So, yeah. Uh, David says, I am chilly. I am chilly. Okay, just brought a shed full because of the other week here. Oh, the green manures. Yes, yes. Uh, Digwell says, pepper chilli recipes as an option. Well, I'm sure we could. Ooh, that does sound... That does sound like a good option. That does sound like a very good option. Um, pepper chili recipes. I do like the idea of that. Uh, happy birthday, Stuart, says Tyro Stream. Sure, he said he was off away on a cliff. Isle of Wight, wasn't he? He's at the Isle of Wight. So that's why he's not here. But he might watch it back. So um, we'll, we'll, we, we've wished him happy birthday anyway. Um pepper chili recipes we seem to be doing a lot of recipes at the moment it's my only slight concern but i guess we are all harvesting our food at the moment uh jenny says do many of you guys have chicken slash ducks i know a couple of you have mentioned them looking into getting some and most <coughs> and the most garden productive way to house them some people house them in compost area um Um, chickens, keeping chickens, ducks, quails, something we could do as well. Um, let me pepper and chili recipes. I'll write this down. Chicken and chicken and duck keeping. Uh, what was the perennial veg? Is uh, what was the other one? Um, Anna Jones says, "Happy birthday, Stuart." Rebecca says, I'm happy to discuss anything. However, I have to say I would learn a lot from you guys about perennial veg. Never grown any. I've got to admit, I do like the idea of discussing perennial veg at the moment because I think that is um, a good idea. Um, I mean, all these, idea, all these ideas are a good one. I'm just reluctant to do recipes because we've done courgette squash recipes last week, beetroot recipes this week um but let, let's let's see what anybody else uh comes back with perennial veg uh, has got a tick down now um guano makes good compost uh yeah 
Jenny says, happy birthday, Stuart. Hope you're having a great day. Anne says, I just watched your Q&A and loved it. Happy birthday. So I know he's not watching. So uh, he's not not here, but we will see what uh, on the playback. Uh, Sturbo Stream, we need a show on storage of our harvests. Storage, that's a good one, actually. That is a good one. I can't remember we discussed that before, probably, but a while ago. But I'll add that down there as storage, definitely. Uh, I thought you said chicken and duck recipes. <laughs> Sorry. No, we, we're not doing that. Uh, Jenny says, love perennial veg idea. Uh, chili cake perennial veg idea is good. And Anna Jones perennial veg. So one, two, three, four for perennial veg. Um, David says, house them in a normal coop, bung in everything, and they will turn it into compost. Just more, just move that to your pile. Yeah, uh, again, we will do discuss chicken and duck keeping at some point. That will go on the list. I say that. Is Nicola on tonight? She was. I'm not, I hope she's okay. I know she's had a few problems with her, her leg and everything, but um, she was here earlier. Hopefully, she's still about. Jenny says, thank you, David. And David, I like the storage idea. I'll put another one down for storage. Um, always good to learn again. Indeed. Our great gas, we have chickens. They ha live in an igloo chicken house with a big metal runoff it, but let them out for a run around the garden most evenings. I've got the same sort of thing as actually. I've got a igloo cube raised with a big runoff. A big run, big cage run. Uh, we don't let them out most evenings because of a dog, but we do let them have a bit of a go in the garden. Um, what? But yeah, we, we can discuss that definitely. Uh, Turbo Stream perennial veg, and I think we're going to be doing perennial veg. Uh, Anne says perennial veg as well. So that's uh, six votes for perennial veg. Um, Bethan also has the Eglu running coat too. Good video she did for that. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, Eglu, I mean, for me, I think the Eglu is brilliant. Sterling, Sterling Ruse, hope I'm saying your name. For beets, beetroot chips, onion powder, cracked pepper, pink salt, diced garlic, and maybe a bit of basil or oregano for the chef's kiss. That sounds delicious. That does sound delicious. We're going to be trying beet, beetroot chips one day now. Um, and see how we get on. Idaho says perennial veg and storage are both good ideas. Don't forget, we can always do... Um, well, I think we're going to be... At this rate, I think perennial veg is what we're going to be doing next week. But we can always do some of the other subjects in, other, in following weeks as well. Um, so I'll try. I like to try and let you guys decide what you want to talk about now because it seems to get you guys tuned in a bit more. But uh, or, or give you a guy, you guys, a chance to sort of shape the show, shall we say? But I think perennial veg next week it is going to be along with a beetroot grow along perennial veg. Um, yeah, that's looking forward to it. That's going to be a, a good one. Uh, right, what have we got? Did I say Digwell has to go? Aubergines are now well charred on the barbecue. Take care, my friend. Hope to see you again very soon. David, thing is with beet, it takes so long to cook. Lush, fresh, though. Absolutely, absolutely. I do like beetroot. Uh, Jenny says, I am doing lots of research. I want them to live in a safe area, not just from foxes etc but also from bird flow i don't want them to be affected too much in the next lockdown so covered etc i know exactly what you mean that's why we got the igloo and built it up because we felt and gave them a big run so that we knew there will be a lockdown bird flu isn't far from me at the moment it will come again um winter will be back under lockdown i can guarantee that uh, where's the mouse gone? There we go. 
Thermo stream. I'm clearing my hang garden at the moment and noticed two small frogs in the undergrowth. So that bit will be left till next week. Hope they like slugs. They do like slugs. They do like slugs. They love it. Love it. Idaho says, is it good to jot down these ideas? It is good to jot down these ideas for future shows. I try to. I do try to. I, I do forget sometimes, but I do try and jot these down. I want to live next door to Digwell Greenfingers, constant Barbies, don't we all? Don't we all? Uh, Nicholas says, I do mine in a pressure cooker. I love it. Do what in a pressure cooker? Um, and we're, if we do the chicken and duck keeping, we're hoping you can actually share your device on that at some point. Uh, you can live on one side and I will live on the other. <laughs> Talking about Digwell in uh, what else have we got? Turbo Stream says he will move in opposite Digwell. Uh, my new one is going to be six by three meters for chickens, but I'm hoping to do other ones so they are in small groups. Um, I'll tell you what I always wanted to do with my chickens. A slightly off subject, but I always wanted to do like a, a chicken tractor. It's not really possible with my garden, but the idea being that I constantly move the chickens into a different bed so that a bit like i guess an old a farm used to work but basically so that the chickens would go in after i've harvested everything they would clear away the ground they would poop and manure the place they'd turn over the soil looking for slugs and snails that was what i always wanted to do with the chickens it just doesn't work in my garden the other idea i had was uh, you actually have the beds are constantly chicken coops but you just open up different areas to let them in as if that makes sense i know what i'm talking about i'm not explaining it very very well um but yeah i always wanted to do like a chicken tractor uh, i have one of my ducks bring up a chicken at the moment a chicken at the moment so yeah ducks are great aren't they uh or a chick sure richard they look great what's is it is that what i'm thinking of a chick sure I always called it a chicken tractor, but the way we're just not practical in my, my gardeners. <laughs> Rebecca says, I'd rather live next to your door to you, Richard. You can have some of my beans and I'll share your courgettes. Deal. Absolutely deal. Not only that, we could then get more people growing food as well. You know what we're like. <laughs> uh nicola says i was thinking of a chicken tractor but worried about foxes getting under it's something we, we can discuss when we talk about this in the future but we've got a few ideas already uh nicola has six chicks growing at present absolutely um i, I, I haven't hatched any well we're giving up on our quails as i've said but we we bred quails and it was good a yeah, fun thing to do i've got to say the only reason we're giving up on the quails is because we're just not eating the eggs it's just too many eggs uh idaho says yes richard it makes perfect sense once the bed is harvested move the chickens there to do a clean up exactly that's exactly what i wanted to do uh, i never did it but it's what i wanted to do uh, the reason i just didn't do it is just because of the my garden's not big enough to have a tractor to move the coop and i would have to move it by hand which is pretty heavy to do on my own amanda might be able to help me but it would be a struggle so i'd have to get people in to help me and it just didn't work so we gave up on the chicken tractor idea who knows in the future we may revisit it you never know you never know. Well, guys, we have got 10 minutes left. And I've just realized I keep forgetting to do this and share. Should you want to zap in? I've added the link in the comments. I keep forgetting to do this on the last few shows. I, I'm trying to find the phone at the moment so that the phone, uh, we can bring the phone line back. I just don't know where it's gone. It's weird. Very weird. David Williams, quail's eggs are pretty expensive, aren't they? Couldn't you find an a outlet locally? <sighs> there wasn't enough to really sell. I think I had four eggs a day from the quail, which, you know, it wasn't really enough to sell on to an outlet. Um, but it just wasn't. The trouble is, <sighs> if you're cooking an omelette or something, you're going to go for the chicken eggs more than the quail eggs because it takes so long 
well, because the quail eggs are so small. I mean, they're tasty, very, very tasty, and no chance of salmonella on the quails. But they just we just weren't eating the eggs. Although there was somebody on Garden as well a few months back. I really like this idea. He grew um, fruit plants in with his quail so that the quail would eat all the bugs. And I liked the idea. I never did it, but I liked the idea of doing it like that as well. Uh, Nicola says, when I have a new veg garden, I may do small ones for the beds to tidy up, but only two at most in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, again, when I'm making smaller chicken runs and just moving a couple of chickens into there when the beds are empty is something else I thought of doing. And it still might do. It could work. Could work with a quail as well. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm really stuck at thinking what to do for the best. Because I'm I'm I, I don't know if I've said to you guys, I've said on the podcast certainly that I've built four of my main beds, as you know, in the bed patch area. And then I did the straw bale garden, which has been a complete and utter failure, I'll be honest. Um and the the tomato bed, which is a bed with no sides, I prefer having sides. But I'm thinking of actually building several smaller beds in that area, and then perhaps I could build something for the quails on that, or the, even the chickens on that, just giving it a bit of a smaller area. Not sure. Not sure. It's all things that I, I think about all the time. Uh, David says, yes, they are small. Get through those Japanese quail are worse than cockerels. Constantly woke me up at 4 a.m. I'm not, I didn't find them too noisy personally, but um, who knows? Who knows? I don't know if, if our neighbours heard them or not. Nicholas says, I love hearing my cockerels. Yeah, I love hearing my chickens. Oh, oh, Roxy certainly does. I said, we when chickens make a noise, Roxy has to run out there and see what's going on. Bless her. Bless her. And says, we made chicken house and run that fitted our four foot bed. They moved around the tree fruit, removed round that the tree fruit for summer, then back onto the beds as and when available. Yeah, that's the type of thing I, I was thinking of. Um, it just, yeah, like a, almost like a chicken tractor. Um, Perhaps we could still do it. We possibly could still do it. And trouble is, my garden's not my garden's not exactly huge, and I certainly fill it up with all the stuff at the moment. Uh, perhaps if I clear up, get rid of a lot of the junk that I don't need, it will probably be better. Uh, Nicholas says I have four so far. Four, four chicken runs. Are you talking about for your beds? Let's see. Uh, David says, I love the chicken cackle, but the cockerels, I've not had a cockerels here. I wouldn't have cockerels because I don't think that's fair on my neighbours at all. My, I mean, my, my neighbour on one side, his son gets up at six every morning to go working. Very, very good. Oh, four cockerels Nicola has. I think if you're in summer rural, then cockerels are fine, but in a town like here, no, not going to have cockerels. Uh, Sterling says, I've got to get going, but all the best, Richard. Thank you for your contribution to the gardening slash farming community. Thank you so much for joining us, Sterling. Lovely to see you. Um, I keep, keep posting in the Facebook group. It's always good to see what you're getting up to as well. Same for anybody else. David says, fork handles. Fork handles, four candles. Is I was saying, isn't it? The uh, the joke that was in oh, I forget the comedian's name now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Idaho says, if I were to build my garden coop orchard again, I would fence off different areas and make it so I could release the chickens into separate paddocks. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would probably do something similar. I mean, I, I keep. I keep toying with the idea of redoing my my um, my garden around a bit. As I said, the four beds. It, it, I always build my garden up bit by bit, 
and it always making changes and a few changes I'm thinking of making uh, over the winter here, especially when it comes to starting seeds off. <sighs> Would I fence off different areas? I did fence off different areas at one point, but I kind of like how we got things at the moment mainly because we've got the dog and that was something I didn't expect to do. Two Ronnies, that's it. The two Ronnies, they were the ones that came up with the fork handles joke that I was thinking of. Um, fork handles. Yeah. Uh, Jenny says, my old neighbour had cockerels. Every time he performed, be it a hen or a large stone, he would announce his achievement every 10 minute. Busy boy. Yeah, bless them. I mean, cockerels are noisy, aren't they? But, uh, but you know, that's it. That, that's the way we do it. Nicola says, we'll do, Jenny. We'll post on the Facebook group. Well, have I missed something there? Have I missed something there? Possibly, but not to worry. I said, we will revisit this um, chicken and duck subject at some point. Next week, we're going to talk about perennial veg, and I think we'll we'll recap on the green manures as well um just to help the, the chilies out i'm just making a note of that um right guys we got about three minutes to go what we got rebecca says i'm changing my garden at the minute gardens are always evolving it's, yeah i'm always i'm always changing my garden around it's it's always about for me, trying to make it more efficient um, in some ways or more pleasing to the eye, which is something I'm never very good at, uh, making things pleasing to the eye. But making it more efficient is something I'm looking at as well. Uh, that's what I mean. Gardens do change. When I first moved in here, um, the garden was very different to what I have now. We had this greenhouse come sheds, sh other sheds, uh, that we've moved around and etc cetera, etc cetera. it always changes and um, like like rebecca we're always changing what we're doing based on what works and what doesn't work uh, hopefully rebecca um if you can email me and uh, we'll see if we can get this video for you for next week so i would love to see your garden it was really good when we saw it last time Turbo stream says nearly checking out time again thanks for the show richard yeah we've got a couple of minutes so we, we could we we'll, we'll try and keep the chit chat going. Uh, Ginny asked for photos of the chicks. <coughs> yep, okay, that's what I missed. Apologies for that. Um, what else? Ido says, be sure to visit to hit the thumbs up. Yeah, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out. It's always good. David says, have to visit the little boys' coop. See you all next week. You take care, buddy, and thank you so much. Another subject, when do you start planning for next year? I heard that. When do you start planning? Because I start already. Um, oh, planning. I'll add that to the list. Uh, what have we got? Rebecca says, just going now. David says... Take care all and enjoy your gardens. Our great guests, thanks for another great chat, everyone. See you all next week. Let's hope for better gardening weather. Hopefully, hopefully, um, it will be better next weather, weather for this whole week because I am fed up of the rain. I'm complaining about rain, which is something I never thought I'd do. Hopefully, on its way for next week, I will keep a close eye. It'll be great. I will look forward to it. Uh, Nicola says, I brought a petrol mini dumper handheld to get uphill with compost materials, etc. Especially when the leg is still bad and walking on crutches. Indeed. That was something I was talking about or thought about earlier. Um, right, guys. I think we are uh, at the end of this week's show. We will be back again next week uh, where we're going to be talking about perennial vegetables. It's going to be a good conversation, actually. I'm quite Looking forward to it, to say the least. We're going to recap on the green manures, and we're going to be doing or sowing beetroot. Right, guys, you take care, and I'll see you again next Sunday. <laughs>